morning. Okay. Well, uh, thank you everyone. We're here today to provide an update on the state's emergency assistance program and to share some new steps that we're taking. As you know, in August, we declared a state of emergency in Massachusetts due to unprecedented demand on our family shelter system. The trend continues to be driven by the arrival of families who are new to our country. I want to be absolutely clear about who these folks are. They are families, some expecting moms, and children. More than half are children. And they are here lawfully, allowed in with the knowledge and consent of our federal government. Massachusetts, we are a compassionate state. We take seriously our duty of care for those who are vulnerable. And we value the hope and the resilience that newcomers bring. So we've met this moment in Massachusetts using all the resources, creativity, and the partnership that we have to offer. We've opened two new welcome centers, set up legal services programs, contracted with human services providers, called up National Guard members, and we've also seen local communities step up in so many ways. But we've also made it clear at every step that our shelter system cannot expand indefinitely. This level of demand is not sustainable. We need urgent support from the federal government, which bears ultimate responsibility for this situation. Today, we can share that our shelter system is on the verge of reaching capacity. As of yesterday, close to 7,000 families are in emergency shelter. That's more than twice the number of families we were sheltering a year ago. This includes 23,000 people spread out across 90 cities and towns at hundreds of locations from traditional shelters to hotels and motels to temporary sites such as college dorms. The reality we are facing now is this. We do not have enough space, service providers, or funds to safely expand beyond 7,500 families. We expect to hit that limit at the end of the month. From that point on, we will no longer be able to guarantee shelter placement for new families entering the system. I want to ensure you that we will continue to engage, assess, and serve every family who appeals for help as best we can. Families with high needs, including health and safety risks, will be prioritized for shelter placement. But especially with winter approaching, we need everyone to understand that we are entering a new phase of this challenge. We can no longer guarantee shelter placement for families who are sent here. So we are, we are implementing new strategies to address the situation. Here's what we are doing. First, I'm appointing a new emergency assistance director to lead operations in this new phase. Lieutenant General Scott Rice has more than four decades of experience in the U, uh, U.S. Air Force, including as director of the U.S. Air National Guard. He served as the tag of the Massachusetts National Guard under two administrations, both for Governor Patrick and Governor Baker. In that role, he led emergency management teams through situations that include snowstorms and floods where families needed support and communities needed a partner. General Rice will work across our incident command structure and in close collaboration with local officials and stakeholders. We'll invite him to introduce himself in just a moment. The bottom line is that he has the strategic and the operational expertise that we need to lead the emergency shelter system through this new reality. In addition to appointing a new leader, we are also taking steps to help families exit from shelter. We have families who have been in shelter for well over a year. The more we can do to help them find their own footing, the quicker we can reduce demand on state and local resources and free up space for other families. For that reason, we're prioritizing access to the home base rehousing program as well as rental assistance and private sponsorships for families who've been in shelter the longest. High housing costs are part of that challenge. So expanding access to affordable homes and lowering costs for all our residents will continue to be a top priority. We're also taking proactive steps to get shelter residents working and self-sufficient. 
As we have said many times, we need the federal government to more quickly process work authorizations for new arrivals. They want to work. They want to support their families. And we have thousands of open jobs going unfilled here in our state. So we are not waiting any longer. We are connecting as many shelter residents as we can to work opportunities. First, we are working with shelters and employers to help match work eligible residents with jobs. That work is being led by our mass hire regional offices and workforce boards, and they are getting results. For example, Mass Hire South Shore is working with Dunkin' Donuts to connect shelter residents to 30 open jobs. And that's just one example of many. In addition, we're developing a new job training initiative with a nonprofit arm of the Commonwealth Corporation Workforce Agency. This is in addition to the work that is going on right now, pairing mass hire workforce regional boards with employers and those who are right now work eligible. But in addition to that program, we have developed a new job training initiative with the nonprofit arm of Commonwealth Corp. This is our state workforce agency. Through this program, shelter residents who are waiting but do not yet have work authorization will now get access to job skills training run in partnership with employers. We want to make sure they're trained up and ready to work as soon as their permits come through. And this is how we will move folks faster out of shelter. It is also a way to help employers find the workers that they are looking for. This is something businesses have asked us for, and it is a win-win opportunity. And we invite any employer out there who would like to get involved to reach out. Massachusetts will continue to rise to this challenge. That's who we are. But I want there to be no doubt. This is a federal problem that demands a federal solution. Families are coming in through the federal system, and the federal government must step up to support them. Last week at our request, officials from the Department of Homeland Security came to Massachusetts to view the situation on the ground. We want this visit to lead to action. Because over months of multiple requests and meetings, we have communicated directly and clearly the needs we have here in the state. We need work authorizations. We've identified specific regulatory and guidance adjustments, as well as logistical improvements, all of which would expedite the review process and help families become more self-reliant more quickly. We also need funding to cover ongoing costs of providing shelter and services. Department of Homeland Security has acknowledged our very strong position that funding should be distributed equitably among the states based on the pressure their systems are under. We need to see that happen. State and local budgets can only stretch so far. From this point on, the federal government must also meet its emergency management responsibilities directly. It will need to establish larger sites where more families can be sheltered and provided with basic necessities. This is something that has been done before in similar moments, and it must be done again. Ultimately, we need Congress to advance meaningful immigration reform and pass the President's proposed funding. Our delegation and President Biden have long called for and proposed these types of solutions. Here in Massachusetts, we have shown that we can move forward in a unified way from our shared values but we can only go it alone for so long. It's time for the federal government to step up and do the job we need them to do. But today, we wanted to be very clear about the state of play and about new measures we are taking to address the current situation. And with more details and information, I'm now going to turn it over to our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you, Governor, and uh, welcome, General Rice. As you know, Massachusetts has gone above and beyond to fill the gap left by the federal government and meet the needs of families. In the first major bill the governor filed, we work with the legislature to get more funding into the emergency shelter system. In the spring, we established the EA Incident Command Team, led by ANF Secretary, Assistant Secretary Adit Bashir, to establish a coordinated approach across our administration. Our Office for Refugees and Immigrants worked with partners to establish a legal services program, helping families apply for work permits, housing, and services. 
this work continues every day. And in August, we announced the Massachusetts Migrant Families Relief Fund. Created by the Boston Foundation and administered by the United Way of Mass Bay, the fund supports everything from clothes and diapers to English language classes and legal aid. In just two months, the relief fund has raised $1.4 million. That's making a difference. We're grateful to our nonprofit partners and all of our donors, big and small. You can still donate if you go to the United Way of Massachusetts Bay website. In fact, we want to express our gratitude to all of our partners, some of whom are here today with us who've been working tirelessly and out of deep personal conviction to help those families. I've talked before about moving ways that the local communities have stepped up, from town officials and schools to restaurants and local farms. We've really seen what Massachusetts is all about. But we also understand the strain this effort has placed on many Massachusetts communities over the past year. We know the current model is not sustainable going forward. That's why our message to the federal government has also been spoken with one unified voice. We have made multiple requests to the Department of Homeland Security for funding, resources, and work authorizations, as the governor mentioned. Those requests have been joined by advocacy from the Attorney General, the State Legislature, the Mass Business Association, the Boston Archdiocese, and the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities in Massachusetts. When officials from the Department of Homeland Security were here, they not only got to hear from us, they also visited with local leaders and providers on the ground at shelter sites to see with their own eyes what the needs are and what it's costing us to meet them. This has truly been a collective effort. But as the governor said, with winter months approaching, we know this will be upon us very soon. And we need everyone to understand, especially the federal government and anyone who would send newly arriving families our way, that we are at our shelter limit capacity. With 23,000 individuals in shelter, that's equal to the size of a small city spread out in 90 different places. From now on, we're going to be managing this system, but we cannot continue to expand it. We're going to manage it with our Massachusetts values, keeping the needs of vulnerable families at the center of our efforts. We're confident in our ability to move forward in this new phase as a team. General Rice is going to lead this work on the ground and serve as a resource for local officials and communities, and we'd like to invite him to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Governor Healy and uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. It's, uh, it's actually good for me to be back in this historic building, and it's great to be teaming up with an administration that is doing the, the things the right way. I'm a longtime resident of Southampton in western Massachusetts, and this state is my home. I've raised my family here. I've worked for 30 years here. I have strong relationships across the state and Commonwealth of Massachusetts in the Massachusetts National Guard to include serving as the Adjutant General. And I've responded firsthand to many statewide emergencies. Is it, it is important to me that our state succeeds in meeting this humanitarian challenge. I'll bring all my values and all I've learned to bear on this crisis. I spent a career leading large-scale organizations and emergency response operations. I've learned that communication and partnerships are key to meeting a challenge like this. This is the approach I will bring to this new role, working across the incident command structure that's been already set up in close collaboration with local, state, federal, nonprofit, and advocacy group partners. We will be responsive. We will be transparent and trustworthy in everything we do. And I am honored that Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll have placed their faith in me to lead this critical mission to ensure the safety and well-being of families in Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, LG. Thank you, General Rice. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, happy to take any questions on topic. I'm sorry, just here, yep. You mentioned 7,000 families. How many individuals are you talking about, and what is the cost currently? Well, there are currently just over 23,000 individuals in shelter right now. Some of those are families from Massachusetts, uh, and uh, about half are families who are new arrivals. About half the population in shelter, though, of the 23,000 individuals are children. 
Governor, you've been pleading for help from the federal government for months now. Is Massachusetts on its own? You know, I think that we've been really clear and direct with the administration what we need. We certainly need action from Congress. We need Congress to act and fund the supplemental budget request from the Biden administration that would give states like ours more aid, more funding for what we are dealing with, which is something that the states did not create as a problem, um, but yet we are having to bear the burden of um, expensing. In terms of the other asks, I've also been clear about work authorizations, about things that they can do to speed the process, to help interior states like Massachusetts who are seeing a disproportionate number of new arrivals to this country in Massachusetts. Again, I am grateful to all who've stepped forward and we've seen some amazing work done in communities across Massachusetts and I'm proud of that effort. Um, it is also the case and that's why we are being clear as we will always be with the public about the fact that we are reaching capacity in our existing shelter system. We expect to reach capacity by the end of the month. We are not ending the right to shelter law. We are being very clear though that we are not going to be able to guarantee placement for folks who are sent here after the end of this month. So what happens to well, we're going to we're going to we're going to do what we can. Obviously, this is part of why it's so important that we have the exit strategies that we talk about today. The two programs to get people working. If people are able to work they will be more likely to exit the shelter system. And that's in fact what they want desperately. And that's going to happen through one of two ways. One, through our work in collaboration with Mass Hire and our workforce regional boards and employers for those who are work eligible right now or near work eligible. The other will be through this job training program set up through Commonwealth Corporation in partnership with employers. That's a nonprofit working with employers to make sure that these folks are able to work. Exiting, exiting shelter is very important. It's also why we've included some additional assistance through increases to our rental voucher program, increases to our home base program, which is a way for families, it has been a way for families here in Massachusetts to get support, to get them out of emergency shelter and into housing. Separately, we will maintain a wait list that will be separate from the wait list maintained for our public housing applicants, but will be a wait list uh, separate for emergency assistance uh, shelter uh, housing, and we will be triaging families. <laughs> Well, my, 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 I want to be very clear with the public. We are not, um, we are not ending the right to shelter law. We will comply with the well, right to shelter law. That said, we are reaching capacity, which is why it's all the more important that we're able to support people exiting shelter and also able to triage the families who are coming in. As I say, um, you know, that is something where I mentioned the, how we're going to be triaging families, but you know, uh, we need help from the federal government. That's why I asked again this morning for help from the federal government in opening a congregate site here in Massachusetts. We continue to look to service providers and others who are out there. Uh, many have stepped forward and done incredible things, but we want to be really clear with the public about the capacity that we are reaching and soon to exceed. <laughs> Sorry. Is this a signal to migrants who are not yet here that Massachusetts is full, that they should not come to Massachusetts? Well, it's certainly a communication that we are reaching capacity and therefore don't expect to be able to house people the way we've been able to house people in the existing infrastructure. Governor, how long will the job training program uh, last and how much capacity does it actually have to, I guess, how many people could it actually train at a time? Well, my hope is that it will last as long as it needs to. I mean, the goal here is to get people who are work um, able working, and we certainly know that across industries we have a need. Employers are very much looking for assistance and, and a workforce here in Massachusetts, and that's why I characterize it as a win-win for the state. Uh, I hope there will be interest. I expect there will be interest based on the conversations that we've had with employers and the number of um, comments from employers about the need for workforce. So it is new. It is an innovation. It is an innovation born out of the situation and our need to try to manage the situation. So we hope to see it scale. Um, I think there will be capacity for it, and I think there will be interest for it. Yep. Were you able to get any friends and family from the DHS team about a uh, congressional aid, anything like that? Or did y'all just announce that they did not promise anything in the 
No, it doesn't mean that. What it means is is um, here's what's happening here on the ground. And I think as governor, it's very uh, much my responsibility to make sure that we are communicating to the public about the situation on the ground. Um, and that's very important to our communities and, and others who've been working with us in this space. Separately, um, this again affirms uh, my call to the Biden administration in terms of last week. We had good discussions, um, and we've continued to have good discussions. I think they know and understand quite clearly what it is that we are seeking, and those discussions are continuing. I'm hopeful that they will um, result in action soon for our state, but in the meantime, we can't wait. We can't wait around things like work authorization, um, and that is why we're instituting some of the innovations. But nothing should signal that uh, the feds have said no to us, um, but we've got a situation to manage every single day as more families come into the state. Governor, are you, are you limiting or do you plan to limit the amount of time a family can stay in shelter? Right now, we're just dealing with folks who are in shelter, working to get them exited, particularly some who've been in shelter for, for over a year. Um, and what we are doing is saying that, you know, our ability to expand to find other locations has really dwindled. Dwindled. We've really um, done all we can in that space. And so that's why capacity has shrunk, which is why exiting people becomes very important, why triaging people becomes very important, and why you know, um, being clear about what is and isn't guaranteed right now in terms of available emergency shelter for new arrivals. Last question, last question. Well, a few things have happened. I think due to our advocacy, we have gotten the Biden administration to move some on work authorizations. We have called for further adjustments there that will further expedite work authorizations. And we've also, as you know, uh, brought on teams to work specifically directly with our service providers on site and uh, residents to more quickly process those and, and, and make those work authorization applications and submit them. So that's good news. Uh, separately, and we're not going to take our foot off the pedal when it comes to, to that effort. Separately, though, that's why we've also stood up these new innovations around work, because people want to work. There is work available. Let's make that happen. It will be good for everyone. And that's what those couple of new programs that we're announcing today are about. But we'll <laughs> Okay, Lawson. Hi. Hi. Healy, uh, and, uh, any update on the ICC uh, UMass Lowell property and Lowell? Just to say that discussions are continuing, conversations are continuing about that site. Nothing about today's announcement will change that. Uh, we'll continue to make use of hotels, but um, we've also seen some hotels uh, take away their, their capacity or not renew contracts. And so it's going to be this, this balancing act as we go forward, but um, discussions still continue with the folks in Lowell. Quick, is that one of the 90 sites that you mentioned, or is that, are there sites like UMass Lowell that are sort of pending in, in the group? It's 90 it's communities. Yeah, it, 90 communities. Right. Okay. 90 communities, but we've, we've, got, we've okay. got many, many more sites okay. across the state. Okay. Well, look, um, we're, we're very mindful of that. Again, everybody who is eligible will remain eligible. We are not changing right to shelter law whatsoever. We are telling the public clearly, though, that we are reaching capacity here in the state. We need federal assistance. We need the federal sites. Uh, we need federal staffing, and we need federal funding. But we will continue to work. We will continue to work in partnership. And again, I'm grateful to our local communities, our school districts, uh, our service providers, our legal services communities, all who have come together in partnership. That continued partnership is needed in this next phase of what we are doing. And I uh, appreciate General Rice's willingness to come on board and serve the Commonwealth in this time. We'll be back to you with regular updates. Thank you. Thank you.